call upon our awesome king. Blessed are the people who know the sound of the shofar. In the light of your countenance, so Yahweh shall they walk. Baruch atad anai loheinu, melech haolam. Esher kitshiano bevisatovitz ivanu, lishmoach chol shofar. Blessed are you, O Yahweh Elohim, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments and has commanded us to hear the voice of the shofar. Blessed be his name and his glorious kingdom forever. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am Yahweh that doth sanctify you. For the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations, for a perpetual covenant, it is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Asher en oki mitzav kahayom al levavekko, veshinayin tam levanekko, vedibor tobam, veshiv tiko bevetekko, uvlek tiko vederek, uvshak bika uvikumekko, uvshotam leod al yudekko, vehayu le todafot beinenekko, uvtav tam el mezuzot betekko, uvisharekko, you shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Amen. Okay, Scarlett's going to lead us in prayer. Abba, open your eyes and see your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Very good. And we say, by his grace, not one will be lost. Favor 
them, oh yeah, with happiness and peace. Oh, hear our Sabbath Together, you shall say before Yahweh or your Elohim, I have removed the sacred portion from my house and also have given it to the Levite and the alien, the orphan and the widow, according to all your commandments which you have commanded me. I have not transgressed or forgotten any of your commandments. I have not eaten of it while mourning nor offered any of it to the dead. I have listened to the voice of Yahweh my Elohim. I have done according to all that you have commanded me. Look down from your holy habitation from heaven and bless your people Israel. 
and the ground which you have given us, a land flowing with milk and honey, as you swore to our fathers. Baruch Adonai, humble rock. Baruch Adonai, humble rock, leolam ba'ed. 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 Baruch Ata Adonai, Notein HaTorah. Amen. Bless Yahweh the Blessed One. Blessed is Yahweh the Blessed One for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and given us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Yah, giver of the Torah. Amen. Amen, and y'all may be seated. Let's go to, real, real quick to Galatians chapter 5. I just want to read a couple of scriptures because what we're doing is, is we talked about a few weeks ago, loving Yahweh with all of our spirit, soul, heart, and mind, and loving our neighbor as ourself. And so during this time of Elul, during this six months, the thing that the Father has really prompted me in is because this has a lot to do with me also. Now, I want everyone in here to know, in this message, I am talking about you. So take it personal, because I'm talking about me too. Because sometimes people will say, I don't want anybody, I, I don't ever get up here and, and, and preach at somebody. But today I'm preaching at all of us, because this is one of the things that he hit me with in this in this scripture about loving our neighbor as ourself and less being honest about it and where we are because this is where and when I'm ministering this message keep your mind off of your neighbor keep it on yourself okay because this is what I'm saying is is we need to be the neighbor and where are we in this because if we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing on our part you can forget the other side coming around. That's just the way it works. Uh, I named this Hallelujah Even Here. Now, there's a song, Hallelujah Even Here. Where we are in our life, because Hallelujah means what? Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Praise yod Hey vav Hey. Can we praise Him wherever you are at? We should, but in the fruit of the Spirit, there again we talked about it's not fruits of the Spirit, it's fruit of the Spirit, singular. Each one, each of the nine, but instead of an orange, it's more like a bunch of grapes. There's a lot, it's fruitful, or a whole tree of oranges. We get a whole bunch of fruits, but it's fruit of the Spirit. And each one, He ministers something to us. So, with that said, it says, verse 22, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. But here's the ones that we want to capitalize on in these next couple of sessions. is patience or long-suffering, kindness, and goodness. That's the three, the long-suffering or patience, kindness, and goodness. Because these three is how I have to relate to me and you. Okay? The last ones happens to be gentleness, well, faith, uh, gentleness and self-control, that's how I have to deal with myself. But my, I'm not a neighbor. I am a neighbor, and I have to make sure I'm... But I'm saying, but we want to deal with the neighbor's part of it. So we're going to deal with patience, kindness, and goodness in these next couple of sessions. Verse 24 says this, Now, those who belong to Messiah Yeshua have crucified the flesh. If we belong to Yeshua Messiah, have we crucified the flesh? That's why these fruits are here. If we have not crucified the flesh, these fruits will not be evident in our life. The, the fruits of the flesh will be evident in our life, okay? So he's telling us, and this is why we're talking about this today, have we crucified the flesh with its passions and desires? Guys, our flesh, as we well know, has a lot of passions and has a lot of desires. And it says, and if we live by the Spirit, we must also follow the Ruach. Amen? Let's go to 
Well, I'll tell you what, just hold on just a second. I've got so much going on here, I don't want to get ahead of myself. It's one of these teachings, okay? All right, what we're going to talk about today is patience, okay? We always say, don't pray for patience. It doesn't matter if you pray for patience or not. He knows us. We might as well get over it. He knows us. We can dress the part. We can do the parts. All of the parts. But guys, he knows us. Okay? I hope this is going to be fun today. Can I have the next slide? Because see, when I was going through this, this is where I was at. <laughs> so y'all just know that I have to work on myself. And this is why I'm saying I'm talking about all of us. Because sometimes what long-suffering has is, is sometimes our neighbor, maybe, or our enemies do something in our life, and we have a pity party. And we get stuck here. But hopefully, in the next slide, we'll go ahead and throw that out there. I'm hoping that we can get to this place over here. Finally, we have victory. Amen? But what I wanted to do is bring up these two slides because sometimes we get stuck in the middle between these two situations. And this is where long-suffering, there's a reason. Patience is good. Long-suffering really means suffering long. Think about that. Nobody wants to suffer. But think about what I wrote down here. Patience, long-suffering, suffering long. It also means long-tempered. Now, all of our metal workers, tempered steel is good steel. Remember the old westerns and we used to watch the blacksmith? They all had them. They're always beating out horseshoes. And, and what do they have? What does it take whenever you have to take raw steel and you have to temper it? Heat. High heat. And you get it cherry red. But after you get it cherry red, what do you do with it? You, you stick it in the cool water. So what you have is, is the Father sometimes is going to bring us into high heat. To get us cherry red. But it's not to make us cherry red with anger. In other words, we are to be patient. Long, it's supposed to be long fused. In other words, our fuse should be long. Because sometimes our fuse is going to get lit. I just If you're in this long enough, you're going to get a lit fuse. The thing about it is, if you have a long fuse, prayer and forgiveness... We can cut that wick. But if we're short-fused, you don't have time to cut a wick. It goes off. The moment it's lit, you go off. So are we long-fused? Are we short-fused? This is for us. We're all firecrackers. So this is for us. This is what long-suffering means. I wrote down some stuff here about tempered in tempering. Tempered steel, now you guys can tell me, because I don't, I'm not, I'm an electrician and an AC man. I'm not the one that works with pipe and all this steel. But usually the advantage of tempering steel is it's less brittle. When you temper it, it's less brittle. It increases ductility, which is D-U-C-T-I-L-I-T-Y, ductility. It's easily weldable. It improves abrasion resistance. Now, these are some of the four things. Now, I got this off the Internet, so if this guy don't know what he's talking about, I'm sorry. But, because I don't know, I just, I do know this, that it does take high heat. But here's the thing. From the high heat, the Father knows what He has to do to burn the imperfections out of us, but He doesn't keep us in the high heat. He put us in the cooling waters. That's our healing. This is what forms us into being used by Him. Because if you're just raw steel, soft steel, you can't be used. You get, you get to where you're not really that usable 
but tempered steel. And so I thought about this word, and the reason why I looked that up, because patience or long-suffering also means long-tempered and what it takes to be tempered. Now, you can't tell me that you have not been tempered or you have not had the opportunity to be long-tempered in your life. We all have. If you're married, you have. Amen? My wife's doing that phone. It says this. It says the quality or state. This is ductility. The quality or state of being ductile, especially the ability of a material to have its shape changed as by being drawn out into a wire or thread without losing strength or breaking. You hear what he's saying here? This is just a regular definition of ductility. The ability of a material to have its shape changed. The Father, if we're operating in the flesh, He wants to change our shape without messing with our strength and our breaking. In other words, He wants to bend us, but He's not going to break us. But if we're not going to do it His way, there will be a breaking. Amen? There will be a breaking. It says this, flexibility, adjustability, readily compliant. Man, this is just a definition of, of steel. But can't we identify that we need to be flexible, we need to be adjustable? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it was everything I needed to do to have to get my wife to stay home today and rest. Because she doesn't like to miss. She loves her peeps. I'm the same way. I would have been fussing the whole way. Now, she really had a great attitude. I will tell you, she had a great attitude and all of that. But you know that she was hurting if she's not here. But the thing about it is, is sometimes, even in this, she has to learn like we do. We have to be adjustable. We have to be flexible for our healing. Because sometimes we can be, no reflection on you, so heavenly minded, we know earthly good. But if you can't be here to minister because you're so hurting, sometimes you need to rest and we need to coddle you some. And so her prayers, I mean, your prayers to her and all that continual prayers is well needed. But she's learning how to be adjustable and flexible, I'm telling you, because it's killing her not to be here. Amen? I, I picked this up somewhere, too. I don't know where I, uh, uh, I printed this off. But I thought this is good. To be long-suffering then is to have self-restraint when one is stirred to anger. I'll let it set in there just a minute. This is what long-suffering is about. Long-suffering is to be able to have self-restraint when stirred to anger. This is the reason why long fuse. We have to work at this to allow the Father to do whatever He needs to do. This is, what, this is what this is about. This is how we are to relate to our neighbor. If we don't have this quality in our life, when something happens, we're going to fire right off. Now, it doesn't go just with our neighbor. It goes with our spouses too. Probably needs to start there first. Because that's usually where the things get tested. It says, a long-suffering person does not immediately retaliate or punish. Rather, he has a long fuse and patiently forbears. It does not surrender to circumstances or succumbs to trials. This is what this is about. Not surrendering to whatever circumstances come our way. And I know that all of us, as we've gone through different things, we have Sukkot coming up. It's a busy season. We have our friends that are moving down from up in the north coming down here. There's a lot of things of moving here, moving there. There's a, everybody wishes that we could just snap a finger and everything be done. But it's just not that case. You're building a house. You ever, you're going to learn long-suffering if you ever build a house. You know, because things happen, you don't, they, pr people will promise you this, or they, this, this, and this, and then things don't work, and all of the above. We have to be long-fused, and the reason is, is because we represent Yeshua on this earth. We represent Yeshua, and this is why I'm saying this is probably one of the most important messages that I've ever had to preach, or had to teach, because I'm talking about me first, 
that we have to be this way. And I'm telling you, sometimes it's not easy. It says the old nature can be very short-fused. Well, it ain't no can be, it is. At times, and it says when we tend to strike back against offenses with unkind words and unforgiving spirits, by obeying the Holy Spirit, the believer in Messiah can say no to retaliation and exhibit a forgiving and long-suffering attitude. Now let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 30. Do y'all have Deuteronomy and all that up there? I've got go, to gotta give you all those scriptures too. That was something that was given to me a little while ago. It says this. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of Elohim by whom you were sealed. Have we been talking about these sealed? Sealed in Shavuot being all the way to Sukkot. It says, by whom you have been sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness... And wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you among, along, I'm sorry, with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, as Yahweh and Yeshua has forgiven us. You don't have to go there. I'm just going to read 2 Peter 3 9. It's just one verse. It says that the Master is not slow in fulfilling his promise, as some count slowness, but patient towards you. Not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come or reach repentance. So you can see that He is wanting us all to come to repentance. But here's the thing. When we come to repentance, then we have to be able to forgive those who has offended us in these areas. Now, I do want to. I don't think I have it up on the board. So I want to go to Deuteronomy 32. And then I'm going to go to Matthew 6. Because there's something very important in Matthew 6. And this was given to me this morning to add into here. Deuteronomy 32, 35. Let me ask you this. Who does vengeance belong to? Yahweh. Right answer. Now, I'm going to read this right here in, in, in 35 and 36. This scripture is not talking about repented people. This scripture here is talking about non-repented people. That we're to turn over to Yahweh and let Yahweh handle the situation. Okay? It says, Vengeance is mine and recompense for the time when their foot shall slip. For the day of their calamity is at hand and their doom comes swiftly. Yahweh will vindicate His people and have compassion on His servants. When we see that their power is gone, and there is none remaining, bond or free. So I just wanted to read this scripture. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 6. I wanted to read that scripture because it comes from the Torah that talks about vengeance is His. I'm going to read Romans 12, 19. You don't have to go there. You go to Matthew 6 because it says the same thing. Beloved, it says, Never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of Elohim, for it is written... This is why I'm saying Romans 12, he's, he's telling you it is written, goes back to Deuteronomy 32. Vengeance is mine, I will replay, says Yahweh. Now, understand, yeah, Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. Now, I want you to think about this. When we're talking about vengeance, we need to understand that there is people that are non-repentant. Non-repentant people, you still have to turn over to Yahweh because vengeance is His. He handles these situations better than we do. All we can do is mess these things up. And all we can do is it will turn into bitterness. It will turn into all these things. Douglas did a teaching, if you remember, I don't know, maybe you're about offenses. Remember an offense? When you have an offense, every offense that you have, he had a, a, a board up here. He had one board. He said, here's an offense. He stuck one in. And then if you have another one, he stuck another board. Next thing you know, he had a fence. That was up here. And what happens is, is every offense in our life that's not taken care of, what happens is, is you're putting a board up. And the next thing you know, you're causing division. You're causing a separation from the body. But more than that, you're causing a separation between you and the Father. That's what you got to see. It's not so much that I'm separating between us. The fence is really separating between me and here. 
And my prayers go up and they hit the fence and they bounce back on my bald head. Y'all don't laugh. But anyway, so this is what happens to us. And this is why I'm saying this is probably the most important message or one of them that I've ever had to do because I was talking to me to make sure that I have to. I have to, with the Holy Spirit's help, tear down every board that I placed up where I've had an offense. And me and him have to work on that because I have to love him with all and I have to love you as myself. And there's no way I don't love myself. You know what I'm saying? If I had a pistol and if I pulled it out and started doing this right here, every one of y'all would duck because you love yourself because you don't want to get shot. You know, we don't want to die. We don't want to suffer. So there is a loving as, and this is why we have to make sure that we understand that with, even with our enemies, vengeance belongs to Him. It keeps us out of the mix into that. It keeps us to where, because guess what? What if that non-believing person repents and comes into the kingdom? And we got this attitude built up. Now we're in trouble. Because now we're having to undo, because we probably allowed anger and hate and all of these things to build. And he tells us not to have any hatred and malice and all of that in our life. So we have to be very careful. Look, have any of us in here ever been hurt? That's why I had to get the panda to hug me. You know what I'm saying? Because we've all been hurt. Some of us way more than others. But hurt is hurt. It is just hurt the way it is. But we need to finally get to the end. We need victory. We don't need to live in the pain. We don't need to live in the hurt. So we have to be, and you know what? Long-tempered. It's really up to us how long we stay in the fire before we can get in the cool water. Because He has to work on us. And you know what? The... the the blacksmith knows whenever to, peel, to pull that metal, Don and Doug, he knows, the blacksmith, he knows what to do. He knows how hot. Whenever you guys, y'all welding, you know when the, how hot to turn your machine. You know the rods that you have. You know what heat does. You know what it has to do to fuse. You know how, what it needs to weld something together to make it strong to where that's the strongest part of the whole pipe is that. Yeah. That's right. Between the fire and the water is the hammer. I didn't even bring that in there. I didn't want to scare everybody off. That's right. It bends us in the shape. That's right. It, but it, at the end, it makes us flexible and pliable, and it makes us in compliance. And we can be of use. We could be of use, and that's just what this is. The Father loves us, but do you know what? He also loves the ones that has offended us, especially when they repent. And this is why I'm saying... If we have a long fuse, it helps. If we have a short fuse, we need to do some work in our life to strengthen that fuse. This hit me in a, in a very personable way here. Matthew 6, 12. It says this. It says, Forgive us of our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Now, the word have is past tense. So in this scripture, he is assuming that you have forgiven. He says, because number one, we're asking for forgiveness. So if we're asking forgiveness, he's telling us something. Guess what? We may have offended also. And we may have debts that we have to ask forgiveness of. So he's almost, well, he ain't almost. He's saying, how come you're asking me? To forgive you when you haven't forgiven your neighbor. You see what I'm saying? Because look what's next. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. Now I thought this was interesting. Because look at verse 14. For if you forgive others their trespasses. Your heavenly father will also forgive you. And I was thinking why in the world is he talking about. Forgive our debts. I've forgiven our debtors. If you forgive the trespasses, the Heavenly Father will forgive you. Then he tells us in 15, If you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Heavenly Father forgive you of yours. 
Then it dawned on me, that's why 13 is sandwiched in the middle. The heart of this thing is 13. Because if we don't forgive, we will go into temptation and the evil one will eat our lunch. And this is why this is sandwiched. This is like a chiastic structure here. Forgive the debts, I've been forgiven. Lead me not into temptation. Then he talks about So guys, this is why this is important that we are to be somebody who suffers long. We need to be long-tempered. We need to be a people. We need to have patience in our life. This is why the fruit of the Spirit. This is why this is so important. I saw whenever I was studying in this, I believe personal opinion. This is where most people are stuck. In their, in, their, in their life. We're stuck right here. We're stuck between the panda hug and breaking the finish line. We get stuck in here because in the most part, we do good. But you know what? There's a word called all. We can't do good with some of the people. We have to learn to do good with all of the people. Especially here when he's saying... I didn't make this up. And I'm telling you, this is not easy. But I'm telling you, because if you forgive others their trespasses, Yahweh will forgive us. But if you don't forgive, then He's not going to forgive us. I didn't say that, He did. So we pray. So here's the thing. Somehow or another... We fight a battle with evil and temptation. And I think the root has to do with the lack of forgiveness. And that's the way I see it. And that's the way he presented it to me. Especially because loving our neighbor as ourself. Because I am the first. I, can't, I won't call names, but I've had some, I'll just tell you, I've said this myself. There are some people I can't be around to love. Because when I get around them, it just... I can, I can go through my life when I'm around my peeps. But I can get around some people when they walk in the door. I turn into this little dude. I do. I'm telling you because the Father is, this is, He's not just talking. It ain't any for me to preach to you this. This is all of us. Is where we're sitting here because there's somebody in our life we're short fused with. And so, what the Father is trying to do for us is not to condemn anybody, it's to convict. Because what we want to do is, I want to be free. I want you to be free. I want you to be able to love and to praise and to do and to shout and to. That's why when we pray, play this song a little bit, hallelujah, praise even here. It's easy to praise when everything is great, but sometimes, let me just read. Where's that at? Right here. Here's some of the, the words to this song. See if you can identify with this. First verse, right now, I feel a little overwhelmed. If you want to, you can nod. If it, if it hits you, it says, right now, I feel a little overwhelmed. Right now, I could really use some help. Right now, I don't feel like it is well with my soul. I'm tired. No, I've tried to find a way around this mess. You can't get around the mess. I prayed in faith that the night would end right here when I just can't understand. I'll lift my hands. See, when you went through this verse, you get to right here, it says, guess what? You, you, you're gonna, the only way you're going to get out of it is praise your way out of it. You're going to have to be flexible. We're going to have to we're going to have to change. Because right here when it says, I feel overwhelmed, I could really use some help, I really don't feel like it is well with my soul. I've tried to find a way around this mess. 
Anybody have messes in their life? Try to find a way around it? I prayed in faith, and I mean just got before the Father that this night would end, and guess what? And right now, I just got to the place I just flat don't understand. But when you get there, you know what? It's the time to raise your hands. Because when you do, He's going to give you the answer that we need. Because it is about forgiveness. It says, hallelujah, this is the course. Hallelujah when the storm is relentless. Hallelujah when the battle is endless. Sometimes we feel like it. In the middle of the in-betweens, in the middle of the questionings. I wrote down here, I said, we are not where we were, but yet we're not where we need to be. Because it says, here I am in the middle of the in-betweens, in the middle of the questionings. So I'm not where I was, but I'm definitely not where I need to be. Over every worry and every fear, hallelujah, even here. Can we say that? And this is what it is. Can we say, praise be the Father? Because we have, everybody in here has different situations in our life. A lot of us has, has kids. And has kids which we wish would understand, at least understand Yeshua in some form or fashion. And we understand of different hurts. Second verse, it says, somehow I bow and my heart gets free. Too far, too hard becomes easy. I find peace here in surrendering and letting go. And that's what we have to do. That's what it is all. Can we give all to Him? Giving all to Him means we have to totally surrender. When we hold things back, when we hold things back in our life, He's going to keep us in the fire until He tempers us to the place that He can get until we surrender. Whenever the heat, whenever that metal surrenders to that heat, it's time to go into the cool water. But not until it's cherry red. Not until that metal gets to the heat it needs to be can the blacksmith move it to where it can go into the cool water to be ready to be formed and fashioned. The bridge says this, Sometimes nothing left to give. Who becomes the sweetest offering? And sometimes choosing just to sing, it is the thing that changes everything. But what I want us to do is, is definitely, I want us to meditate on these words again. And I want us to meditate. I want you to be right where you're at and, and internalize. Every one of us has a story. Every one of us has a situation that we're going through. And this is the thing. I want, I want myself, I want Tammy, I want all of us to be free. And everybody in here wants to be free. But it is our... He gives us by the gifting... This is called the fruit of the Spirit. Not the fruit of my Spirit. These are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. The Kadosh. This is fruits that He gives us because you know what? He knows us. Because we have a sin nature. And because of the sin nature, the very opposite of this is the works of the flesh. And this is where a lot of times we get hung up. Guys, if we're honest, I, I would love to say that every day I operate in all nine of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I can tell you that every day I probably do achieve a lot of that. But I am also here to tell you sometimes I operate in the stinking works of the flesh. Because of situations in, in, um, that goes on in my life. Something that came to me when you were saying that is, um, if we are put into the fire and we jump back out again, we're going to have to continue to go in until we get through that situation. That's right. And we're going to be beat up and beat up and beat up until we get the victory over it. So... We need to learn to get in there, get it taken care of, and get through it and, get, through and it. get the victory. Amen. I am here telling you that I'm not telling you that it's easy. Because nobody loves heat. Nobody loves persecution. That's why it's called suffering. The suffering, if there was no suffering, 
you would have no change. It takes the suffering part, being, being someone who can suffer long, it takes that to build the character in us that we can love our neighbor as ourselves. Amen? And that's what this is about. Okay, let's see. I do have Colossians, but let's do... Yeah, let's do Colossians. Chapter 1, verse 9 through 14. And so for the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will, with all spiritual wisdom and understanding. I brought that out because he's listing three of the Holy Spirits. Remember the seven spirits of the Holy Spirit? Knowledge, understanding, and wisdom is throughout. And here Paul is praying for them. And I know that our prayer warriors here, every Wednesday, they're praying the same thing for everybody in this building. And probably for people in Kenya and everywhere else. So as to walk in a manner worthy of our Master. Fully pleasing to Him. Bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of Elohim. So you see here, you see bearing fruit in every good work. That's bearing, what fruit do you think that might be? Maybe like the fruit of the Spirit. It says, being strengthened with all power according to His glorious might. For all endurance and all patience or long suffering with joy. Because He's telling us, because joy is also a fruit of the Spirit. But joy is what Yahweh gives us. The first three, love, joy, and peace, all of those come from Yahweh. You can't do anything else. True joy comes from Him. The rest of it may be happy. Remember, we talk about happy. Happiness dictates because of happenings. But endurance and long-suffering, there's some... But we can do it with joy. He can give us the joy because the joy of Yahweh is what? Is our strength to be able to do this. He can give us, if we have the right paradigm, He will give us a long fuse. That we can have endurance and patience that whatever comes our way, we don't act like this. Amen. That's what this is about, about loving our neighbor as ourselves. Verse 12, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints of light. He has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins. So we have a deliverance and a transfer. Now let's go to James. Verse 7, Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Master. See how the farmer waits for his precious fruit of the earth. We talked about this not long ago. Steve did an awesome message about seed and everything. When you plant seed, it takes a moment. When we're going through the process, I'm not telling you that, but there's a process. There's a process in our life to get here. Okay? There's a process to get here. It's like putting seed in the ground and waiting patiently for it to be able to bear fruit in our life. But we need to go through the process. We need to have that. See how a farmer waits for his precious fruit from the earth. Be patient about it until it is received the early and the latter rains. You also be patient, established in your hearts. This is what I'm trying to say today. This has to be established in here first. If it's not established in here, it won't. That's what the fruit of the Spirit has to be established in here. For coming from Yahweh, or coming from the Lord, is at hand. Then he says this, Do not grumble against one another, brothers. See where it says the word brothers? You might as well say neighbor here. These are people that are covenant. So that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. Remember when he... Think about this. Now you go back to Matthew 6. Remember it says, Forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. It says, do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may be, not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing. He's telling us, the judge is standing. And, and our forgiveness is really, according to Matthew 6, is based on us forgiving others. Because if we can't forgive, how can he forgive? 
Now, I'm not talking about your salvation of being lost. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about the wood, hay, and stubble, and the precious stones, and all of that. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't push the envelope about our salvation either. of having Because it could be rebellion on our part if we don't forgive. Verse 10, as an example of suffering and patience. <laughs> Seems like it's everywhere. But the example of suffering and patience, brothers... Take the prophets who spoke in the name of Yahweh. Behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job. We know that story. And you have seen the purpose of Yahweh, how Yahweh had compassion and was merciful. Some of you guys may know the song. I just heard it last week. And when I heard it last week, then I had to play it a hundred times because it resonated with me because of the message that it talked about. Because a lot of times we do get hung and we get caught in these places. And then when this jumped off at the page at me, guys, I don't want to be tempted. I don't want to be fighting temptation. I don't want to be fighting evil. I don't want to have that mess in my life. I don't want it in your life. But sandwiched right in between a forgiveness is, is if we don't, then guess what? We need, to get, we need to get that. And so that was what he gave me. It's probably not the most flowery message in the world. But I will tell you, I'm just telling you that we're in a fight. And a lot of times the fight, we're fighting ourselves. It's not really an enemy as much as sometimes we're fighting because we are not getting ourselves free in certain areas. And that's what he ministered to me in this. And he was pointing at me first because I can tell you, the people that I love, I'm very long-suffering. The people that get under my skin, I got a short fuse. And the Father's telling me, and these are, these are believers and the Father's telling me, big dog, you better lengthen your fuse. Because what's blowing up is going to be you in the end. Not, not hurting them, it's just you, you're hurting yourself. So, you have something? Just to tie in exactly what you're tempering and the metallurgy. So, Don, Doug, if I'm going astray, let me know. In a refinery, going past the, the blacksmith, right? We've all seen the movies with the blacksmith doing all that stuff with the steel. A steel in itself, when you get some sort of metal, I don't care what kind of metal it is, by itself, it's not, if you looked at it at a molecular level, it's not exactly uniform. There are weak points. So how you put that is, say I've got a long, I'm supposed to be long fused, but I've got a few spots in there that are short fused. Mm -hmm. So if that whole thing comes underneath stress, what's going to happen? Right. It's going to break at the weak point. It's going to leak at the weak point. It's going to crack at the weak point. That's always going to happen. So tempering is actually bringing that thing up to, a, up to that cherry red, up to that certain temperature, holding it there for whatever period of time, depending on it's different for different metals, and actually to get it strong, to get that tempering, is actually not to throw it in the cold water. It is actually to hold that temperature for a period of time and then let it cool slowly. Sometimes at the refinery, we actually have to wrap blankets around it so it doesn't cool too fast. Because what that does is that evens out that structure evenly across there. So it can take a blow at any spot and still hold. It's taking those short fuses and stretching them out. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing becomes that long fuse and can take the abuse and can do that. On the other side, if you take that red or white hot metal and you throw it in water it hardens the steel so think of it this way the father's the one who brings the heat is he not amen if he brings the hot and he's putting correction in our lives and we jump out into the water it's going to harden us mm -hmm. it's going to harden that heart instead of tempering us which is actually going to get us to that 
state that he wants us to where we can take the blows of the enemy Amen. and still keep marching on. Amen. Very good. Amen. Strengthen. That's what we need to do is be strengthened. Just let the Father heal, minister, do whatever he does to us in our life. I don't know, maybe it was just me by myself up here today. But I really, really believe that this is, this is for all of us, not only in here, but it's for all of us everywhere. Because out of all of the nine, this one right here, I mean, we, self-control is just between me and my own struggles. And that's my own set of issues. But when it came to Matthew 6... I need temptation, and I need, I'm like Tyler, I like the way you said that. I need the temptation, I need these evil desires, I need all of that out of my life. I don't need any added stress. I don't need any added where I'm sitting there. So I want to be a person who forgives, and a person who walks in forgiveness to our neighbors. And then, whenever the enemy comes, and they're non-repentant, I want to be able to be able not to stress and say, Yahweh, you got this, and I'm going to move on. Amen? Amen. Let's... It's a well-known fact that all steel, in order to be usable, must go through the fire. But there's a special grade of steel that Yahweh wants us to become. And it's called tool steel. And when somebody says tool steel, there's a whole another level to the process that it goes through. There's more tempering. There's a more careful selection. There's more time. And when it's finished, it gets into some of the most difficult places. Can you imagine the stress that a chisel takes from being beaten on one side by a hammer and breaking a rock on the other side? That's tool steel. That's the kind of steel that he wants to turn us into. And the blacksmith... The tool maker, he knows exactly how long to leave each one of us in the fire. How many strokes each one of us needs from the hammer to forge into us to be the precise tool. Different tools take different heat. He has a design and a plan for each one of us. He has a purpose and a mission for us to fulfill. And when you see someone beside you not taking as much heat, that's not your business. And when you feel like you're taking more than what you should have to endure, the tool maker, the master, knows what he's designing you for. And so be encouraged. He will not leave you in the fire one split second longer than you need to be there. And you will not receive any more blows than what he sees is necessary for the calling that he has placed on your life. Amen. Amen. Very good. Amen. That's right. He will. He will. Father, I just come to you, we do. Father, we just thank you for this message. And the message, hallelujah, even here. Father, each one of us has been, and maybe some of us even now, are going through situations. But there's something that started in our life at the beginning of this six months. And it's loving you with all of our heart, soul, might, our mind, our very being, and loving our neighbor as ourself. And this is what, because all 
of the Torah, all of the commandments hang on those two commandments. And if we got issues with loving you with all or loving our neighbor as, we will fail at trying to uphold the Torah. The Holy Spirit working in our lives. You have equipped us by the seven spirits of the Holy Spirit of Isaiah 11, 1 and 2. You have given us the fruit of the Spirit by your grace and your mercy so that we can live a life down here and be the person that we need to be. You have given us the gifts of the Spirit to where we can pray for and where that we can pray for ourselves and we can believe the power gifts that you give us for healings, for miracles, for discernment. Father, for all the other, the gift of faith, even when we get down to a place to where we just, just run out of faith, then all of a sudden you can supercharge us. Father, you have equipped us. You have not left us, but yet you are molding us into the image of your Son. You're molding us into that bride that we need to be. And so, Father, I thank you and I praise you for what you've done in my life in revealing to me where I have fallen short and where I've needed to repent and shored up things in my life, boards that I have placed in my life that become a fence. Father, to be able to tear them down one at a time. So, Father, we just thank you, we praise you, and may these words in this message, the very heart of it, be sealed in our hearts today as we glorify you and we praise you even here in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. Thank you guys. Amen. All together. Sound the great shofar for our freedom. Raise the banner to gather our exiles and gather us together from the four corners of the earth. Praised are you, O Yahweh, who gathers the dispersed of your people, Israel. Prayer for the United States of America, which we dearly need. <laughs> dearly need. All together. Abba, Father, giver of life, we pray for and entrust the United States of America to your loving care. You are the rock on which this nation was founded. You alone are the true source of life, liberty, and blessings. We cry out for this land to be reclaimed for your glory. May it be that you will dwell among your people. Send your spirit to touch and open the hearts of our nation and its leaders to seek your will and your ways. Grant us the ability and courage to stand for the truth, and may we be that righteous nation you have called us to be. We ask this in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen. In prayer for the peace of Jerusalem altogether, I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of Yahweh. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem that is built as a city that is compact together, to which the tribes go up even the tribes of Yahweh, an ordinance for Israel to give thanks to the name of Yahweh, for there thrones were set for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. May peace be within your walls and prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brothers and my friends, I will now say, may peace be within you. For the sake of the house of Yahweh our Elohim, I will seek your good. The ironic benediction. Yivarecha Adonai v'yishmarecha Yair Adonai p'navalecha v'ikunecha Yisa Adonai p'navalecha v'yosem lecha shalom May Yahweh bless you and keep you. Amen. May Yahweh cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. May Yahweh lift his countenance upon you and give you shalom and peace. Amen. And it's time for the Kiddush, the blessing over the wine. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, borei pri hagafen. Amen. Blessed are you, O Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, 
who creates the fruit of the vine, and for giving us Yeshua the Messiah, who said, I am the vine, you are the branches. And the blessing over the bread. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Amen. Blessed are you, o Yahweh our Elohim, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth, and for giving us Yeshua the Messiah, who said, I am the bread of life. It is Shabbat, thank the Lord. It is Shabbat, thank the Lord. It is Shabbat, thank the Lord. It is Shabbat, it is Shabbat. Thank the Lord, it is Shabbat.